What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports and today is an awesome day. It's warm, it's nice outside. I'm actually in shorts, it's supposed to be like 75 degrees and we are back on the Tahoe. Now, as you guys know, everything here gets slammed and this is going to be no different. So when I bought this thing, it already has a drop. So it has two inch drop in the front, three in the back. The two inch in the front is obtained with a lower A arm and I don't like that. I will be replacing that at some point, but today we're gonna focus mainly on the rear of this thing. So in the back, it is dropped with D arch leaf springs from Belltech. Now I could add a hanger and get to about five and a half inches of drop, but that's not gonna work for me. I wanna get lower. And when I do that, I'm gonna have to notch the frame. So what we have got and what we are doing today is we're just going to focus on the back. So I'm going to do a couple things. Obviously, we're going to have to install the C-notches. And because I didn't get the original leaf springs when I bought this thing, I had to buy some leaf springs. So I will list all this stuff in the description below, as well as the flip kit that we are going to do. So we should get almost seven inches of drop in the back. So about four more inches than what it's currently setting at. I'm not 100% sure that my tires are going to work. Um, they're junk anyway. So I may have to, I really don't want to use these wheels but I may uh, buy some cheap used tires just to drive it around for now. I don't know, we'll just see as we get there. But the focus of today is getting the back dropped. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna be taking the rear bumper off and uh, getting it out of the way because I have to have it off to drive the door pins out to get the door on. So I don't know that I'll mess with the door today, but I'm for sure gonna take the bumper off. Uh, maybe that'll give me an additional amount of room. So uh, let's get started. I'm gonna set you guys up on the tripod and uh, we'll talk our way through this. I, man, I really wish that wasn't there because this thing wouldn't look too bad if it didn't have that huge dent in the side. But anyway, we're gonna get this thing jacked up and I'll just talk you guys through the steps of what I'm doing. It's a little bit harder. I'm probably only gonna show you one side and I'm gonna show you the hard side because the fuel lines run on the frame. And so we have to move those in order to notch the frame. But what I'm gonna do, like I said, get this thing off the ground. I need to support the front uh, as far as rolling off and I'll put some jack stands not only under the frame, but I'll probably put some under the rear end as well. I might go ahead and loosen it up to get it out of the way. We'll just see how much room we have once we get the wheels and tires off, but let's get started. Now that we have this thing up and supported by jack stands, I've still got my jack under there, but we are gonna have to probably release the rear end. So I have sprayed a little bit of WD-40 on all of the bolts that we're gonna be taking loose. So your hangers front and back, your shocks, your U-bolts, but I am gonna take this bumper off first, just two 18s here, and then there's one that comes in from the bottom and then one that comes in from the back side. So I'm gonna get the bumper out of the way. I'm gonna be replacing it anyway, but uh, before I replace it, obviously we need to get the old one out of the way and it's in okay shape. Somebody would probably buy it just to put on an old work truck, but obviously that's not gonna fly with me. And I feel like I'll have more room to see what's going on with it out of the way. So I won't show you guys that, just those four 18s on each side. So eight total should get this out of the way. Now there is a bracket that goes on the inside. So hopefully we can get the bracket loose uh, once we get this out of the way. But then we will move on to loosening up the rear end because I just don't have enough room to cut here like I'd like. Uh, our cut's gonna be somewhere in this area right here. And the downside is these two wheel drive Tahoes have a support in the center that we're gonna have to cut into. So uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit different than the than the uh, all the notches I've done in the past, I guess you could say, because there's more involved, because there's more behind it. But I still think it's gonna be a pretty easy process. Like I said, I'm only gonna show you guys this one side, but let's get uh, that bumper off and then we'll start loosening up all this suspension stuff. Now that we have the bumper out of the way, and like I said, this, this is the bracket that I was talking about, and there's an uh, another 18 that's up on the top side of the frame, which I'll probably get uh, out later because um, I think the new bumper will come with new brackets. If it doesn't, then I might leave that there. But for now, I've got everything out of the way that I want out of the way. And so let's move on to actually getting this rear end loose. So the very first thing I'm gonna take loose are the bottom of the shocks. And once I get those loose, I'm gonna put some leaf or some uh, jack stands underneath the rear end, and then we will loosen up the U-bolts. Now, when that happens, um, the suspension is going to come down because the leaf pack is actually on the top side. So once we do that, the rear end will loosen. I'm going to gradually let it down on my uh, jack stands and then we will go from there. I think at that point we'll be able to get the leaf springs out and we'll be good to start cutting. Now that we have the rear end loose, I will tell you guys those U-bolts fought me the entire way. I had to use a breakover bar to get them almost uh, quarter of the way threaded down before my impact would loosen them up. So they were hung up. 
I did spray them down really good. I probably should have came out here the night before, but it is off. And as you can see, I have the rear end setting down on jack stands. I have, I still have my jack under it, but I also have a jack under the pinion in the front. And the reason I do that guys is because it wants to roll forward. And to me, that's the easiest way to prop this up. So we have it far enough out of the way at this point that we can go ahead and take the leaf springs out and that'll give us a nice, easy cutting area. And uh, once we get that out, we are gonna have to remove, you can see a fuel line right here in this hole. All those fuel lines actually are right behind there. So obviously we don't wanna cut through those. So we will have to remove those. So there's bolts along all of this that hold those up against the frame. So what I'm planning on doing is I'll go ahead and take those out probably all the way up to under the driver's seat. And I'll show you guys on the inside here in a second, but let's go ahead and get these leaf springs out. I will tell you guys, 21 millimeter is what it took to get the shock out, 21 millimeter on the bottom of the U-bolts. It's 22 millimeter on the front and back of the leaf spring, however. So now that the leaf springs are completely out of the way, I'm underneath the truck looking at the driver's side frame rail and I'm taking all the 13 millimeters out. So there's one here, everywhere there's a piece of plastic to hold the metal lines. I've taken those out all the way up to under the driver's side seat. And what that allows me to do is move this around and pull it back out of the way. So what I'm gonna do next is there's a, there's a series of wires back here that run. I'm gonna push those little pieces out of the frame on the other side. And then we will be able to pull this over as far as we can. We're still gonna have to be really careful when we cut it because obviously uh, there's a spot here so we can't uh, do much about that. But when I'm cutting through, I'll just be very, very careful to try to miss. I'll probably pull these up a little bit and uh, use a either some zip ties to zip tie it over or I might use like a bungee cord to hold it out of the way. But the next thing we need to do is we need to go grab our template and uh, talk about placement of it. So here's a template that we got, and as you can see, uh, unfortunately, it's made for the other side. Now it's reversible, but you can't see what's written on the, once you turn it around. So I did go ahead and cut it out, because to me it makes it a little easier to deal with than trying to fold it, but you do need to poke a hole in the A marking right here. And we need to bolt that basically where the fuel line was before, and then we will mark um, every corner here. So we're gonna mark the corner here, here, and then the same thing here and here. Now, uh, once we do that, then we can transfer uh, a line, basically draw that line out, and that will be our cutting area. But it is nice that they have a spot here that we can secure it with one of the 13 millimeters that we took out that held the fuel lines. And uh, like I said, once we do that, uh, they do say that you should uh, drill a hole in each corner. I'm not 100% sure I'll do that. I might do it up here at the top but I don't know at the bottom that I'm actually gonna drill a hole because we're just gonna be wrapping underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this lined up, make my tracing mark, and I'll show you guys before I cut. Um, and it does say to use a 3 8 drill bit, I believe, to drill a hole there. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna go ahead, get this all lined up, and then I'll show you guys, like I said, before I cut. So as you can see, I have it marked, and I did go ahead and drill not quite 3 8 of a hole. 3 8 is a big hole. And so I, I did build, drill these with a step drill bit just to uh, give me a spot to turn and I really don't think I need that much. 3 eighths, like I said, a, that's almost a half inch hole and honestly I think that's too big. So we're gonna go ahead and start cutting. I'm just gonna use my uh, DeWalt grinder with a cutoff wheel and it should be pretty quick. Now um, it's probably not gonna come loose it completely because it is bolted uh, or riveted to that center channel. So I am gonna go ahead and cut this. I'm gonna cut along the bottom. And then once I'm finished up doing that, we may have to go grab um, an air hammer and knock this rivet out. But for now, I'm just concerned with cutting this. Now, be, be cautious that your brake lines and your electric lines are behind this. So don't go really deep. Just uh, be real careful, cut really slow. And once you're through, don't keep pushing it. So just like back here, I was able to get them up high enough where it's not anywhere near the cut, but up front here, you can only get them so high because of that center channel. So we're going to go ahead, cut this out, and then I'll show you guys once I get it knocked, at least cut for the most part. Um, and if I have to cut this rivet off, I'll show you guys before that. One other thing, guys, I know it's pretty cliche to say this, but before I start with the uh, cutoff wheel, cutting this you need to make sure that you have some sort of eye protection not only am I gonna wear goggles but I'm gonna wear a shield and um, 
believe me, I've been to the eye doctor several times to get stuff pulled out of my eye because I thought I could just do it quick and it wouldn't bother me. But just know that you need to make sure that you're protecting yourself. This shield really comes in handy, keeps stuff out of your nose. And uh, this, uh, obviously, you need these for sure. So you can see we have it cut out and uh, have it cut across the bottom. The last thing I need to do, and normally guys, I didn't even talk about this, but because this thing was lowered, somebody had already taken the bump stop off. Normally you'd have to cut the bump stop off before you do any of this. So uh, it is kind of nice to not have that in the way, I guess. Anyway, we need to go ahead and chisel this off. So I'm gonna grab an air hammer, knock this rivet off, and this piece should swing out of the way at that point. Now, we are not finished. We still have a lot more to do here, uh, but we do need to get that out of the way so we can see behind it and it'll give you kind of an idea of where your lines are at. Now, I was feeling constantly to make sure that I wasn't getting anywhere close, and I didn't. But like I said, you guys need to make sure you cut really, really slow and um, just be really cautious because you can only get those over so far. So as you can see, once I knocked the rivet out here, uh, this piece fell right out. So the next thing we need to do, guys, it gets a little more intense because we're not through cutting, actually. We have to uh, knock these rivets out. So this rivet here and this rivet in the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock those two out. I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm cutting across in them and then I'm knocking them off with an air hammer. But obviously we need to do something here. So what I'm gonna do is once I get those rivets out, I'm going to let the pressure off these fuel lines and that electric line and pull it back this direction. Once I do that, then we have to trim this panel all the way across until it's even with the top side of this cut. The other thing is I'm gonna to have to grind this down. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is poked out right here, this little arch. So I'm gonna grind that where it's smooth with the frame at, while I'm doing all of this. So basically what I'll show you next, guys, is under the vehicle because not only do we have to notch that, the right in front of the gas tank, we're gonna notch it as well. And then we're gonna to have to relocate a few of like the vent tube, I believe, on the top of the rear end, which isn't a huge deal. And um, then there's a section on the actual body that we're gonna have to cut as well. So uh, I'll kind of give you guys updates throughout this process, but right now I'm gonna go ahead and knock those rivets out, trim that across, trim the section in front of the gas tank, and then I'll show you guys what I've got, and then we'll move on from there. So at this point I have this set in place, and I did go ahead and take the vent tube off the rear end. Um, well, the vent tube that comes off of the rear end. Uh, there's a 13 millimeter bolt that holds that guy in place, but we have to trim this bracket off. So I'm going to cut it off right in front of where the brake line comes in and uh, just cut it right here up against it. Don't hit because we don't want our brake line coming out just on the other side of it. And then we're going to relocate this to the rail that the gas tank is or the what they consider the cross member for the gas tank. Um, it'll mount somewhere up in here and we'll get it out of the way. And then at that point, hopefully we can start drilling some holes and tightening in our um, C-notch. So at this point, I'm kind of not following the instructions because it says that you want to line up this hole and that's for that plastic piece that holds the fuel lines on the inside. But guys, there's no way for that to line up. And the reason I say that is because this is completely sandwiched up against the frame here. So it can't go any further. So you'd either have to bend this or you would have to make this hole bigger and I've already made this hole a little bigger but you can see we're not quite there so at this point what I've done is I've ran the bolts in the bottom and I know it says uh, to do these top ones first but it also says that's gonna line up and it's just not gonna happen uh, I've had that in previous flip kits or C notches that it just doesn't work but I will say it follows the frame nicely so I think we're where we need to be where we need to be and like I said I'm not gonna bend this in order to make it uh, set where it says it should set so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and mark these holes and start drilling them now what I might do is I might mark them take this out of the way that way I have access to the fuel lines behind it I don't want to accidentally drill drill through a fuel line and so I to me that's probably the best way is just to mark them and then use a smaller drill bit to get the hole started and then I'm using a cheap stepped drill bit um, and these things are like 15 bucks for two of them and guys, these things work better than anything else. So I will tell you uh, when drilling holes in the frame, that seems to work the best. But I'm gonna go ahead, get this all drilled out, marked, drilled, and the bolts put in. And it does say to torque the bolts to 120 foot-pounds, which is, that's quite a bit. 
and then I may end up having a buddy of mine run a weld along the side the bottom uh, on both of these I'm not really sure it just depends on uh, what I think it looks like once it's bolted in but you know it doesn't hurt to do that it's not a real great access point but I may end up doing that anyway I went ahead and got the bolts in, so all the holes are drilled, the bolts are in, and now um, I went ahead and torqued them all. So we are good on this side. I've still gotta do the other side. Like I said, I'm not gonna show you guys that. It's actually a little easier on the other side because you don't have to deal with uh, any of the fuel lines, brake lines, any of that stuff. No electronics over there. It's way easier, and that's why I wanted to show you guys this side um, because it is a little bit harder because of those things. But now, uh, I still have to mount this guy up there on the fuel line or up on the fuel tank the front of the fuel tank and i didn't get that mounted yet and the other thing is we do have to notch the cross member right there so part of the floor right above the um, drive shaft so i will show you guys it does come with a template that makes it really easy now the downside is i'm cutting with a cutoff wheel and they're asking to put an arch in there so what i'll probably do is cut as much as i can with the cutoff wheel and then use the grinder to go to um basically the mark i'm going to make so i'll show you guys once i get the template in there what it, it's kind of going to look like and then we can start actually reassembling things at that point i still have to put the bump stop in and uh, it just there's a hole in the center here that bolts the bump stop this flip kit uh, that i ordered does come with the bump stop but it doesn't come with anything to mount this if you order the whole flip kit from belltech um, it's, it's a little more involved because they only do a five and a half inch and this is going to be way way lower than that so for theirs they come with a lift shackle for the back and then you have to put their hanger in because it actually reverses that hanger and makes things uh, completely different so other than that guys i'll uh, just kind of keep you updated once i get that template in place and uh, then we'll just kind of show you as we go the rest of this so we're getting closer so guys sorry about the wind it really picked up here but this is exactly where that template goes. So this comes with the kit. And so what I've done is I've taped it up there. You can see you have to cut out a portion of it, but this is what we are cutting out, this right here. So because I'm using an angle grinder, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut as close as I can. And then that's why I've marked it because I'm gonna go back with my grinder and grind it to a nice circle. So we off, we, we're gonna have to move this template after we make these cuts. I'm gonna take this off since I got it marked, but we have to cut all the way across the bottom and then put this template on the other side and do the same archway. So not a whole lot involved here. This is pretty thin metal, so it should cut fairly easy, uh, way easier than the frame did as a matter of fact. So just be careful and uh, make sure that your markings are somewhat lined up with this drive shaft here. So after we get it cut out, you can see it's really notchy. And the reason being is because I was using a cutoff wheel. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a flap wheel, uh, which is on my grinder right here, and we're gonna go over um, this until we get to the line that I made and then it should be nice and smooth. So I'll show you guys after I finish and I'll probably spray a little bit of paint on there just to keep it from rusting. So here we are with it all ground down and finished up and it looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but I did put some white paint on it just to make sure it didn't rust. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get um, this vent tube put into place. I actually took the bracket that I cut off. So you guys know you had to cut this off and uh, cut it down and I'm gonna use that to bolt it um, to the front of the gas tank holder, essentially. There's a cross frame that sets uh, in front of the gas tank, the piece that we notched. I'm gonna bolt it up there. And then I'm also going to put in my bump stop. So the bump stop, there's a hole right here that you bolt it down and this kit does come with bump stops. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that stuff into place and then we will lift the rear end and get the leaf springs underneath it. Now you guys know that I did have to replace the leaf springs because this truck came with de-arched uh, Beltec springs. We are going back to the stock spring with the flip kit. So the next thing you guys see will be, I'll have the rear end up and we'll have the leaf springs just loosely bolted into place and then once we get those, and I'll list all that stuff below because honestly guys, it's not a bad idea with the mileage on this thing to buy new leaf springs and they're relatively cheap to be honest with you. I think I paid a hundred bucks a piece for them, uh, which is really cheap for brand new, um, not sagging uh, brand leaf springs. So leaf springs are in the truck, we're ready to put our saddles in. So the saddle has a hole in the bottom and that hole needs to be at the front of the truck. So that's gonna go over 
uh, the bolt in the center of your spring pack. And so you need to make sure that that hole faces forward because the rear end, it pushes the rear end back a little bit and keeps your pinion angle in line. So what I'm gonna do is uh, get this underneath here, make sure that it's on that pin. And we need to put it in this, um, these two channels right here. Just like that. Now, what will happen is uh, when I let some pressure off the rear end, it'll roll back into place and we can put this thing on the top. I don't know if you guys watched in my last video when I did um, a buddy of mine's truck. It didn't come with this bolt in the center. The McGoy's kit comes with that and it needs it to stay in place. So now all we have to do is drop our U-bolts over this and put our plate on the bottom. So I'll show you guys once I do that, literally the stock U-bolts set on here and sandwich this all together. So I've got the wheels back on and honestly guys, I'm a little bit worried that I might have to roll the fender. Um, it's, I think it's gonna be like slammed, but we're gonna take the jack stands out, get the jack out of the way, and uh, we're just gonna have to see. So this thing is definitely lower, guys. It is, uh, it's gonna look sick when the thing's completely finished, but we need to torque things down. And actually, guys, I think because the bumper's off back here, I'm trying to keep you out of the wind, but uh, because the bumper's off, I think I'm gonna be able to torque everything uh, from the ground here. So it's really, really easy on these because everything is 81. So 81 on the nut here, 81 on the nut there, 81 on the front of the leaf spring, 81 on the U-bolts. The only thing that isn't 81 is the shock, and it's 52. Now it's 52 on the bottom, I believe it's 17 on the top. Uh, we didn't we didn't loosen the top, so I'm not gonna worry about that, but 52 on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead, torque this all down, and then we'll stand back and take a good look at it. So I've got everything torqued down, and I think there's one more thing I wanna do today, and I think I'm gonna try to get this door off. So you guys know I have a new door, or a new to me door, that doesn't have a dent. Mine has a really odd dent on the inside here, and while it probably could be pulled out relatively easy, I just I got this door with the other door, the driver's door, and I thought, honestly, uh, it won't be much to swap this out. So what I'm gonna do, or what I'm gonna attempt to do, is drive this out. So it's really odd. The only way these things come apart, it's actually welded to the inside of the door, the hinges, and the other hinge is welded on the inside of the quarter. These 10 millimeters do absolutely nothing. I'm not even really sure what they're for. So. The only way to get these out are to drive the pins out. So that is what we're going to attempt to do. And it is a ginormous pain. I'm gonna use an air hammer and try to hammer these things out and we'll see what happens.
pounding on these for a minute, um, they came loose. The problem is, is I've got the top one out as you can see, but the bottom one is just hanging on. And chances are I might be able to get it out, uh, the door off with it in there, but it's wanting to fight me. So uh, I'm gonna keep hitting on it. I've got just a, um, I don't know here, just a piece of junk chisel that I'm trying to use as leverage because I don't have anything I can get on the bottom side of it. I have to keep, I'm keeping, or I keep spraying WD-40 in here and uh, hopefully that'll loosen it up and then we can get the new door on here or new to me door. And I, I'm also gonna have to swap out the handle obviously because the keys will be different. So I don't know, I might be able to just swap out the lock cylinder. I'm not really sure yet actually. That would be better if I could just do that. But we'll get this off, it shouldn't be much longer and um, get it out of the way. So as you can see, I was able to get it off and uh, not too much here, guys. We just, the bushings are completely toast. And I did order new ones. Uh, well, actually they come with the kit, the new pin kit. So I'm gonna get that bushing out of the top. We'll get this kind of cleaned off a little bit and see if we can't get that new door back in place. Hoping that we can. I think, I think it's really a two person job, guys, but we turned it into a one person. So the good news is that the new bushings are um, the same size. So unlike the door bushings where there's a different top and bottom, uh, all these are the same. So I'm gonna knock these into place, one going this way. And then one coming up from the bottom, both on the top and the bottom here. And then we'll get our new door on and uh, slide these pins in. I'll show you guys swapping out the door handle. It's literally pretty easy, just a couple bolts and it's out of the way. Uh, but what I do want to tell you is there's two little clips that go on the bottom of this, which honestly I'm not a huge fan of. I'm going to see if GM sells these replacement pins, and if they do, I might order them instead because I just don't love the look of this. I don't know, it's just not, not my style, that's for sure. It just doesn't look the same on both sides and that's going to drive me crazy. So either I'm going to replace the other side or I'm going to see if GM sells these and just order new ones from GM. Well guys, we are all finished up and uh, I this is the next day because it was so windy that I couldn't really give you guys um, a good walk around without getting a ton of wind noise. Now it's still windy today, but hopefully it's not quite as bad for you guys. But Holy cow, you can't argue with the results. It is definitely way lower and there's way more involved on this than there is like my truck in there. There's fuel lines in the way. You have to notch all those pieces that we had to notch. Definitely a different scenario than doing a truck. Now, all the stuff that I use like always guys will be in the description down below. And I'm kind of, I, it looks like the wheel pushed back a little bit. So I'm gonna have to mess with that. I'm not in love with that. Um, the leaf springs are dead center, so I know that the saddle's installed correctly, so I just may have to tweak with that. I'm not 100% sure. It's not really bad, but it's off like an inch. It's an inch further back, and I know it does push it back when you do this, but I don't know. We're, we may have to mess with that. Anyway, I do like the look of it. It's about a six inch drop. I used a Beltec cutout uh, or C-notch, and honestly, guys, to me, it looked the best. And this is going to be kind of like one of those things where I do on my trucks and stuff where I use different pieces. There's no real kit that I like out there. So I'm using different pieces from different vendors. But for the back, we use Beltec C-notches and I use a McGoy's flip kit for a truck because nobody really makes a flip for these. Beltec does, but it's way more involved and it only gives you five and a half inches of drop and I wanted more than that. So definitely looking better there. The, the uh, rear door, I absolutely love how that came out. Uh, can't argue with the price on that. You guys know that I went 
to get um, the, the driver's side door and came home with this so it's all cleaned up now i got the badges all off got the new pins in which i'm not in love with the new pins i may do something there not 100 percent sure that i like that i may go with the new new gm ones if i can find them because as you can see they're 100 percent flush they don't stick down the bottom so may have to end up doing something there but let me know what you guys think it's obviously coming together uh, I wanted to break this up because there was so much involved in the flip for the back and I haven't even ordered the front stuff yet because I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do. The other issue I'm going to run into is I'm going to bring the front down another three inches. It's a two inch drop now. I'm going to bring it down another three, but those tires won't work. And so I don't want to buy new tires for these wheels because I'm not going to be using these wheels. But at the same time, I don't want to put new wheels and tires on it and then take it to paint and risk getting overspray on them. So I'm kind of maybe looking for a set of used tires for just the front. The back will be fine for now, but the front, maybe I'll have to do something, find a little lower profile tire for now. And like I said, just pick up the used one. I don't want to buy new tires for something I'm going to get rid of. So like I said, guys, it's coming together. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you do like this video, like always, please smash that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, guys, you got to go hit that subscribe button. We got a ton of stuff on this. We got a ton of stuff coming on this and everything else. Uh, while you're down there subscribing, make sure you ring that bell icon. That, that way you're notified every single time we drop a new video. And stay tuned to see what we work on next.